Sure, yeah. Sure. Thank okay. you. Okay. I think I have to go ahead from the booth here. Yeah, probably on probably live already. So it's just right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to uh, the Keys Fest afternoon recital. This is also a live streamed community concert. So I know we have various groups around Kalamazoo watching. Um, I forget them all, but I know a couple of locations and organizations that this is being broadcast at a lunch in the evening. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, my name is Adam Shoemaker. I'm director of education with the Gilmore here. And um, it's nice to be back in person. I'm sure it'll be even more full force next year, but I think, I think we're here, you know, we're doing it. So thanks for the <laughs> little tiny applause, it's perfect. That's <laughs> all we need right now, that's all we need. <laughs> no more, I don't wanna jinx anything, so. <laughs> I'm really excited for this concert. Um, you know, I've seen these guys come through Western and kind of follow their social media, whether they know it or not, how I stalk it and try and keep up with their cool activities. Um, before I introduce them, I want to give uh, a mention to our sponsors. On um, the back of the Keys Fest program is a whole giant list of all the education sponsors that make this stuff possible. So come on in and take a seat. Um, and but the, today, today's sponsor is the Russell Gabrier Fund. He's one of the original directors of the Gilmore Foundation. Um, we also have a sponsor for the event, the Black Arts and Cultural Center. So thank you to the Black Arts and Cultural Center for helping us out today. And then Public Media is our streaming sponsor, and so they're streaming with us today. So let's give those sponsors a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, so we're really glad you're here. Um, I mean, seeing live music in person, I know I was talking to some students that hadn't performed in a couple of years, and some people, so kudos to you all. Um, Rufus Ferguson, pianist, Jigger, previous Gilmore teacher, uh, colleague, and just amazing player all around. Uh, he is here to perform with Stratos, saxophonist, producer, creative composer. I saw some of his music appeared on the National Sawdust in New York. Like, what? Um, these two guys uh, are, I don't even know what they're gonna play today, um, but in the spirit of collaborative piano, if you saw the morning's workshop, you know, they're gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to play together. And I think as pianists, uh, we'd like to see more and more of that and as musicians all around, and what's music about making it together. So Rufus has been uh, gigging all throughout the region and the country re recently. Um, he's a fantastic jazz player, and I think you'll enjoy both Rufus Ferguson and Stratos in today's community concert. Thanks. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Watching live music is uh, more important now than ever, so your presence is is, uh, is welcome. Um, my name is Stratos. This is my partner in music, Rufus Ferguson, um, and uh, we played a couple tunes for you. Uh, the first tune we played was uh, Out of Nowhere, and then we played uh, Softly as in a Morning Sunrise, and then we played uh, Moonlight in Vermont. And, um, these are all tunes that are um, a part of the, uh, the, the canon in, in the, jazz, the jazz world. Um, there's thousands of tunes and, and it's, it's a part of our job to, to learn as many as we can so that we can um, communicate in the way that we did. You know, Rufus and I haven't played together in quite some time. Um, we didn't rehearse or anything. You know, we just sent some tunes to each other and, and that's, that's, how, that's how it goes. Um, so we're here to talk a little bit today about um, collaboration. That seems to be the uh, theme. Um, and it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different depending on what the ensemble might be. So today we're playing in a, in a duo setting. So there's no drums, there's no bass. So we're a lot more free to, or at least I'm more free to, uh, to push and pull as you, as you might have noticed. Um, you know, tempos might, they might get faster and slower, you know, we, we can change the form on a, on, you know, at the, at the drop of a hat. Um, and as a saxophone player, it's sort of my job to, to take in the information, the harmonic information that Rufus is 
giving me and to, uh, to use my skills to, to do you know, something interesting with that. I might, I, might, um, I might follow it, I might you know, contrast it, I might play on top of it, I might support it. You know, these are all things that we, um, that we practice to make good communicative music. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any other questions or anything, you know, we can make this as interactive as you want, um, but really we're here to play and share information and, uh, you know, maybe learn something new together, so, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think, um, I think a lot of people might, you know, sort of, when they, when they approach jazz, because it's different every time, they might think that, like, oh, wait, you know, what can I hold on to? Um, so to answer your question, so in, um, in our world, um, a lot of the tunes, well, the two that we just played actually come from, uh, like, plays. So the, what we're playing is, is just the chorus of that, of that play, so it might be, you know, a verse that's much longer, you know, and this, this, this stuff, a lot of stuff is written in the 30s and 40s, so it's, it's pretty old. So what we do is we might take a version that some of our ancestors have played, you know, maybe Miles Davis or John Coltrane, they really set the standard for um, how this music works. And so what we do is we learn, uh, we learn tunes from listening to their recordings. And you know we learn the melody. So for me, I learn the melody, I learn the the harmony, and I learn the form, so I can know where I am in the piece. You know, since I'm I'm a, a horn player, I have to deliver the melody, so I have to make sure that that's strong. Um, but where we start to veer off is every every musician has a different way of of interpreting these melodies. So. In the 50s, you might have heard someone play this a little bit more straight ahead, you know, more, um, a little bit more intuitive to someone who might not know what they're playing. Um, but since, you know, this music is always growing, always changing, um, we, we like to, to, to stretch and we like to surprise ourselves. You know, a lot of those times that these rumors were playing, I didn't know where it was going to go. And, you know, it's kind of our jobs to, to, to sort of go with it sort of say yes and to, and to accept that. Um, so, you know, if he's playing a pattern or something and I hop on that, you know, it's in background and we're thinking of contrasting and complementing, you know, it's just happening much faster. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, we also want to sort of uh, appease ourselves. And so I want to play something that I've never done before. So um, if, I, if I go to something that I know I've done before, I might say, ah, oh, actually, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to take that into a new, a new route. So um, that sort of, you know, ends up sounding like that. So that's a great question. Thank you. Any more questions? We got at least one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so kind of the way the music is set up is, you know, when I was referring to the, the canon of, of this, this music, um, that's, sort of a, that's sort of a hack, you know, a way so that we don't have to always rehearse. You know, if I know a bunch of these standard, you know, they're called standards, if I know a bunch of these standard tunes and Rufus knows them, then we can just, you know, get together and play. We don't have to rehearse. Um, in this setting, since we want to be creative and we want to, you know, make music together, um, it is tricky because we haven't played together in, in such a long time. So, you know, I don't know where he's been. I don't know what he's been listening to. 
vice versa. So that makes it um, our job even more to like really listen and, and to be ready for what's going to happen um, and, and to be reactive. You know, I don't, I don't want to come into it with, with any, um, any preconceived notions about, oh, I want, I, want, you know, I want this arc, you know, I want this to happen. You know, I kind of need to sit back and, you know, it's kind of working both sides of the brain at the same time. I'm listening, but I'm also, you know, acting and, and creating and, and, um, and uh, uh, forming. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think a lot of the mystique is when people listen to jazz, they're like, you know, well, how did they, how did they know to do that at that time? You know, how did, how did that happen? And um, a lot of it comes from listening to the, the, the masters, you know, they sort of laid a groundwork for things that can happen, you know, so once you spend a lot of time listening to this music, it sort of becomes a, a second language and you are able to say like, oh, I did that because I, you know, I think I heard someone else do something similar, you know. Um, so the more we listen to this music, the more familiar, familiar we are with this language and we're able to communicate better. You know? So, yeah. great question. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Kind of along the lines, <clears throat> I can't really see this because it's yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. Um, in terms, and as, as well as your question, in terms of as a pianist, we have kind of a different job as collaborators. Um, because we are the harmonic foundation, sometimes we're the rhythmic foundation, and so we kind of have to be a little more widespread in terms of the way we present ourselves. And so uh, a big part of being a good collaborator is knowing who you're collaborating with, right? And so um, I know Stratos, we've been knowing each other for years, probably going on 10 years at this point. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of stuff together. We used to get our haircuts together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> I know, right? Um, and so I know him as a person, so that also helps me as a collaborator understand him musically. Um, but also, as a pianist, sometimes I, I'm in situations where I have to swing hard, right? And um, that may not be this situation. So I don't bring maybe certain parts of me to every situation. I, I know Stratus' music, you know, very well, so I know he he would respond to this. Um, and so there are certain things that I'll bring to this collaboration that I may not bring to another collaboration um, just because I know kind of what my partner is looking for. It's just, you know, really just like a friendship or a marriage, you know. Um, you kind of have to bring some things, they have to bring some things. You kind of, you know, there's like a saying where you don't love somebody the way you want to love them, but the way they want to be loved. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like how I approach collaboration with my partner. Um, I kind of know what he likes, what he responds to, what he listens to, the music he writes. And so I try to respond in a way that I feel that he would appreciate. Um, but then also as a pianist, my job is to not just be a pianist, you know. Um, we're really master orchestrators. And especially in the jazz world, um, we don't just play piano. A lot of us are composers, obviously, like Stratos to myself. Um, and so I don't approach this instrument as a piano, but more so as uh, an orchestra. And so. I, and I know he's an amazing um, composer and orchestrator, and so these are things that I know about him. You know, I'll approach playing more so, where here's my strings, and this is what cellos would do, and this is what brass would do, versus just, here's the keys on the piano, I'm just gonna play, right? Um, and that kind of just brings some life um, to the collaboration, just knowing who your partner is and what they respond to. Any additional questions before we play again? Okay. We're gonna play some more and then think of some some good questions. We wanna have some conversation with you.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
mean when I say that is, is a lot of saxophonists practice to be you know a great drummer on the saxophone or a great pianist on the saxophone and what that sort of means is having you know sort of like being a being a great rhythmic player um, having the agency and the internal meter to be able to hang no matter what the rhythm section is doing you know if the drummer wants to break away from you know, a rigid, stiff rhythm that, that doesn't affect me because I have such a strong internal thing. Um, or if I'm playing without a piano player, being able to outline harmony, um, whether that's there or not. And so that's a, that's a huge part about, about, you know, playing an instrument that, I'm, that can only play one, one note at a time, is trying to break free of this, of this limitation. Um, because you know, rhythm section players, you know, pianists, drummers, guitarists, bass players, they have the power to, to, um, to, to really change the texture of what's happening. Uh, me as a saxophonist, I only really have the power to imply a change in texture. You know, if I am implying something, um, you know, it could be, it could be, yeah, great, you're, you know, I, 
hear what you're doing, but if the rhythm section doesn't do something to respond to that, then it, you know, it doesn't happen. So that's kind of where you know, this, this um, communication comes into play. Um, you know, Rufus has such an intuitive way of playing that if I go somewhere, a lot of times he's there before me, you know, and that makes it so easy as a saxophone player to be able to, you know, go where I want to go, and especially in this freer setting where it's just the two of us playing, um, we can really just sort of stretch and anything can happen. Um, and, and that's, that's always a, a, a nice place to be because, again, we don't want to play and play the same thing every time. You know, a lot of this music is, is improvised and we want to surprise ourselves and, you know, that's, that's, that's just a part of it. Um, and even, you know, nowadays a lot of people who come from the classical world, that's something that they're getting into. Um, there's an overlap between, uh, you know, free, people who play free in, in the jazz world and people who play new music people who are making that music together and and the whole um, the whole point of it is to, is that communication uh, so yeah do you have any more questions yeah do you think if James Bach was alive today he would be a jazz musician <laughs> that's an interesting question um, I think I think Bach were alive I think he would say why are you guys teaching my stuff in <laughs> you know, I think um, <laughs> I think a lot of the a lot of the, the masters who and, and like the true like progenitors of the music. Um, that's just kind of how they heard music. You know, I don't think Bach was saying, "Okay, well, if I you know write this out, oh, well, that'll be a parallel fifth." You know, I, you know, I, he, this that's why it was so amazing because that's just how he naturally heard music. Um, you know, maybe he would be into jazz. Maybe he'd be like, you know, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Maybe that's where I would have gone if I had lived another 300 years or something. Well, yeah. in, the, in the Baroque, it was expected that all musicians could improvise. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that, you know, I think, I think, you know, that's might have been falling away from, you know, in, in, in recent years, but um, it's, it's such a, it's such an integral part of, of being a musician is being able to have that relationship with with sound and, and being able to you know come up with stuff and um, you know I, I think the same thing could be said about uh, about Charlie Parker you know if, if you guys aren't familiar Charlie Parker was a saxophonist in the 30s and 40s he was one of the um, the innovators of what we now call bebop but back then they just called it you know creative music um, and you know, a lot of his music is, is taught in, in the academy. Um, but for him, you know, that's that's just how he related to, to sound. That was that was just the most logical thing. Um, and you know, it is a good tool to be able to sort of you know analyze it and capture it. Um, but I think it's a it's a means to an end. You know, it's supposed to be just that a tool so that you can again, communicate, because, you know, we, we, we use bebop, in fact, at last game we were both playing some stuff that comes from that tradition, um, but, you know, we more use it as, as color, you know, as a, as a thing, you know, when Rufus, I think there was a, there was a point in time where he started walking uh, with his left hand to mimic a, a bass player, and for me, you know, that was like, okay, you know, I could either go with this or, or not, and I chose to go with it, and so I started playing as if there was a bass player, as if there was a drummer, you know, playing a little bit more locked in, more eighth note lines, that sort of thing, that language. Um, and the reason why I was able to access that is because I've studied that music, you know, but I think, you know, again, using it as a, as a color, as a texture, makes it much more, um, much more effective. But I love that question, yeah. Any more questions? Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess they can be made. You know, I think, I think it's a lot easier. Well, I mean, I think if, if you think of it like like language, um, you know, when we're born, our parents speak to us in whatever language that is. That's what we are able to speak easily. Um, 
the same thing with music. You know, I was listening to a lot of the classic records from the 30s to the 60s when I was a child, and so that language comes pretty naturally to me. Um, and I think it could happen to anyone if you if you listen to that music. You know, I think you know we absorb that sort of stuff um, very very naturally. You know, a lot of younger students who are trying to learn jazz, you know, they have a lot of questions. You know, because it's, it's a really complex music, and they really want to get into that sound. Um, but the answer to a lot of the questions is to just, well, have you listened to it? You know, have you spent hours and hours and hours listening to the music, digesting it, you know, um, analyzing it? And by analyze, I don't mean, you know, write it down, but you know, picking up your horn and saying, like, well, how can I phrase this the way, you know, Sonny Rollins did, or how can I, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so I, I, think, I think it's just, uh, it, it's a language, and it, it has to be practiced and spoken just like anything. Uh, the only thing I, I will add um, is actually about a comment Eddie made earlier um, about the idea of his job is to imply and my job is to kind of execute. Um, and, he, and he said that he heard me walking and so he decided to, you know, act as if it was bass player and we were no longer in, in this idea of this um, Latin groove and more of a swinging eighth note. But uh, I actually reacted to what he was doing. And so mm -hmm. what he said was correct. He implied it. And I personally could have just stayed in the lab for the whole time. But he implied something different. And so my job was to execute what he implied. And we, and we hear these things. Um, this, this, this level of communication is extremely uh, tricky, but it's also very simple. Um, there's things that about this music that are, are very kind of laid out. You know, swing has this sound, and straight eights or you know, kind of like Latin jazz has a specific sound, and modal jazz has a specific sound. And uh, he only only really has to kind of just imply where we're going, and my job is to kind of shift us and take us there. Um, and it it could easily go the other way. This is just the way we decided to collaborate today. But it could be opposite. I could imply, and he could execute. Um, and you know, if we had time, I would definitely try to try to show that. Um, but uh, he's correct in saying that this is really just a level of communication. And so, I, I have an 18 month old daughter, and she's just learning to speak. And it's interesting to watch her speak because she obviously can't read yet. Um, but she's learning what words mean and how to say them. And some words are coming out clearer and clearer every day. And it's just it's the same way with jazz. You know, you listen to that stuff for so long. And then it starts to kind of just come out of you naturally. It's not as um, it's not as uh, complex as sometimes academia makes it sound. This is you know jazz music is not just a language, but it's a culture, and it has a history. And if you can really tap into all facets of jazz, it's a lot easier to learn. It. The, the issue really comes when we only listen to, or when we only try to learn it through learning the language, but you can't really appreciate the language without appreciating the culture of the music. So if you take the dive into the culture and the history of this music, learning the language is actually the, the easy part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah. What suggestions would you have for a young pianist who wants to start playing jazz by himself or herself? Uh, I would say exactly what Eddie said. Go buy some albums. Don't worry about books. Don't don't worry about any of that. Go listen to some albums. Um, if you if you're already playing piano, clearly you understand the instrument. Clearly you have ears. Now you need to learn another language. Mm. So, so go listen to some albums. Learn by ear, or can if you're a classically trained, can you start with some music in front of you? Uh, even if you're classically trained, you still have an ear. Mm -hmm. It's just a different. Is is you're using your ear in a different uh, way, right? Um, and so. You have to now train your ear to hear music versus training your eyes to see music. Mm. Um, and so a big part of this, like I said, just go get some albums. Your ear will, you know, it's just like learning English. You will learn it. If you're around it enough, it's going to come out. Um, but you, you know, you can't, if you ever like, if, when I was younger, it was like Rosetta Stone. You know, if you like do it for like a week, you're not gonna get very good. <laughs> but if you did that for two years, 
you probably start really picking up on some stuff. And so it's the same with jazz. You listen to it long enough, stuff will start to come out. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we enjoyed ourselves, and we really hope that you all um, have enjoyed our uh, concert and conversation with you all. Thank you. Big another round of applause to you. I just want to make a quick mention before we end the concert today. Um, thank you to those who streamed online. If you look in the back of the program book, there is a BOGO deal for a festival concert. There's also a little uh, listing of our family concerts, which is some really fun, some good fun pro programming for the festival. So. If you have questions about festival stuff, it's coming up, and uh, there's a lot to see in here. So, again, thank you, Rufus and Stratos. Um, so great to hear what you have to offer, and love the discussion. So, thanks. Thank you.